southern boys with the promise strength. Ain't nobody man enough to feel the pain. Welcome to the Seven Days Podcast. I am doing this over again because I kind of got a copyright on the song that's in the background. And I feel like I did a lackluster Seven Days Podcast, mainly because I well, I was recording this very early in the morning and I was tired. So right now I, I'm recording this 2 or 7 a.m., but I'm more energized and I feel like I should talk more. And yeah, so I'm going to talk about Monday Night Raw and obviously I hope you guys know my reasons why I was a little bit upset, all right? Obviously you understand that Sasha and Charlotte went at it again and you know the women's title was on the line and Sasha Banks won the title again, right? Just everyone pissed me off that night and I just couldn't take it. I couldn't, I, there was some positives, but... I let the negatives, you know, take over instead of, you know, having some positives. I mean, I listen to other people, how they talk and how they like some things on Raw. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, they're right. That, that I like this part. I like that part, you know. But the main stuff there, I didn't like it at all. Like, let me give you an example. Um, Sasha Banks... Uh, winning the top, winning the title again. Um, it that was their sixth match. The fifth match was when it, it ended in a count out, by the way. But there's that was their sixth match that they fought for the title, and I realized that women's title has never changed hands. You know that uh, to anyone else. The women's title, ever since coming to, ever since being revealed at WrestleMania, it never changed hands. Never. To like to anyone else besides Charlotte and Sasha, look at it. Charlotte won it at WrestleMania, held the title all the way till July 25th. Sasha Banks won that title there on Raw, and after that, lost it to Charlotte three to four weeks later at SummerSlam in Brooklyn, New York, and then after that, lost the title one month later to Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks one month later lost it to to uh, Charlotte at Hell in a Cell in her hometown in Boston, and then now, a month and a half later. Or a month later, it's like every month, the title changed hands since the 25th of July on Monday Night Raw after the brand split was in full effect. So, that is bad. That's really bad. It proves how that WWE does not trust anyone else in the Raw Raw Women's Division to to be the one to, to get a title ring. You know, Dana Brooke is not going to reach that level. Bailey could. You know, Nia Jax could do it too. But just four people? Four people? Just to win the title again and again and again? Sasha Banks, Charlotte, Nia Jax, and Bailey? No Dana Brooke. No Alicia Fox. And no Emma, Lena. And no Paige. That's bad. There's eight women on Raw. That got drafted. I don't know if Tamina is even working with Raw. I don't know. Eight to nine women are working on Raw. And we've only seen four of them. Right? Within the past couple of months. We've seen four to five of them in the past couple of months. But we but weekly, consistently, we only seen about four. Bailey, Dana Brooke, Charlotte, Sasha Banks. But like uh, a while back, we saw Nia Jax, Dana Brooke, Bailey, Charlotte, and Sasha Banks, and Alicia Fox only showed up twice, and that's it. But yeah, I I don't like the fact that it's like that. Why? Where is Summer Rae? Is she still injured? She has to be cleared by now. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, Paige. Last time she wrestled was before the brand split. It was. I believe it was like May or June that Paige competed in. And then she got suspended. And now she's she suspended again. And now Paige is off the face of the earth in the WWE. It's like, okay, I won a championship that was degrading women anyway. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to go and live my life happily with their real, which I don't mind. You know, if it's outside WWE, I don't care what you do as long as you're happy. But... 
but in the WWE, I care about what you do and and what you're doing because I'm a fan. And the fact that Paige, it, I, I I don't know. WWE has ruined her in my opinion because she's on Total Divas. She I don't think so anymore. But she was on Total Divas before and and the makeup and weird looks. I don't know. Paige changed, okay, for the worst, for the worst in my eyes. She went from someone that had a fire up in her ass. She had some, she looked like she, she had something to prove in the WWE. And then she comes in, she wins the title on the first night, and then had a mediocre title reign, lost it to AJ Lee, won the title back at SummerSlam, copying AJ Lee, doing uh, skipping. And then lost the title to AJ Lee in a triple threat match at Night of Champions in 2014. And then after that, never ever touched the Divas title again. So, Paige, I mean, uh, for, for two years, she hasn't done nothing. She hasn't done shit. Nothing. Jack nothing. Yeah, she's injured. She has to go through. I, I think she did surgery. I'm not sure. But she ha, she's injured. She needs time off. Six to, eight, so six to nine months, I think. I don't know. But she needs to get her shit straight. That's all I'm saying. You know, if it's the if it's the, to, to go through uh, therapy and go through, you know, you know, just to get better, you know, then sure. Then, then, then I don't mind that, you know. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain about that. But if it's anything but that, then what the fuck are you doing, you know? But that's just me. That's what I was. That's why I'm complaining. I mean, Emelina, what is she gonna do? I, I'll, they have to do something way outlandish to 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 make me be like, okay, I'm feeling this right now. All right, like I'm getting a genuine reaction. I'm giving you a genuine reaction, like, you know, like I actually care, like a positive, genuine reaction. But if if they don't do that, if they don't gain my interest, then I'm gonna give you a negative, genuine reaction. It's as simple as that. I mean, she. All I've seen is pictures, pictures. It's not hard to find. Uh, bikini pictures on the internet, you know. You just you're just making kids go on the internet looking for naked pictures. Uh, have you thought? And Triple H, oh, I got this eight year old kid. You know, I don't want her searching up China on the internet. And then what do you see? Uh, you see adult videos. Triple H's logic. Okay. So Vince doesn't realize this then. He doesn't realize um, that kids can just go online. Because, trust me, kids are going to be like, oh, shit, she's hot. Oh, my gosh, she's hot. Especially, the, I know the, there must be kids that that that, that probably uh, masturbate right now, right? So, obviously, them, they're going to go on the internet, look up photos, and be like, she's hot, and then go at it. I'm just saying. That's just me, okay? But, um, you get my point? Like, all I've seen is pictures. I don't want to see you in, 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 in quotes, nice, nice dresses, end quote. I don't want to see you in bikinis. I mean, I, I don't, I, now, now I sound, okay. Look, I'm not saying I don't want to see her butt ass naked. I'm not, look. I have, I already established this, okay? I would I I would smash every woman's uh every woman in the in in the WWE in the women's division, okay? From fucking Dana Brooke to fucking Nikki Bella or Dana Brooke to fucking I don't know shit. It, like you know Dana Brooke to Charlotte or Dana Brooke to fucking Sasha Banks, etc., etc. I would smash all of them, okay? Okay, I, I'm not bullshitting, but the thing is, now is the time for wrestling. Let me give you guys a little backstory, okay? Pretty sure I told you this 
last month or two months ago. We're in December now. Okay, so I'm going to be uploading this December 2nd, obviously, right? So, obviously, when I started watching in 2009, it was Divas. And all I saw Divas do, besides wrestle boring, useless, waste of time, I don't care, looking for hot spots, hot pictures, uh, like hot moments in a match type thing like that's how it was back then I didn't care at all I went crazy for Kelly Kelly years ago I'm not bullshitting whenever I see her holy shit I, I get excited right because I'm like this chick is fucking hot holy shit and and honestly I'm not gonna lie whenever I see the women on TV I'm not gonna bullshit I look at their titties I look at the titties every time I get a chance to see it. All right, so when you see a Sasha Banks, when you see a Char- if their titties are out, not fully, but they're being covered up a little bit. But if they're out a tiny bit, I'm a look. You can't blame me for that. That's like that's like if a, if someone has a ripped if you have a a hole in their shirt or their pants, right? You try you you don't want to look. But it's right there. It's out in the open. It's obvious. So you're going to see it. So you're going to look at it. It's basically like that. So. Obviously. Back then. Only cared about how they look. The Bella Twins. I didn't know who was who. One would say Nikki. One would say Bree. And I, I, I wouldn't believe them. <laughs> you know. Because I instantly thought of. I instantly think of Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. One is Zack, one is Cody when it's the other way around, right? So, obviously, I knew about that Twin Magic shit way before I knew about WWE. So, I knew none of this shit was going to... I'm not going to fall for this shit. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. Then, like, seven years ago, Mar- Maris would wrestle for the Divas title. Eva... Uh, no, not Eva. Uh, Eve Torres... Uh, Melina, uh, Mickey James before she left. Why was she? They they had the nerve to call her fat. Look at her today, bro. She had a kid last year, last year or year before. She's. I still want to smash her. I don't give a fuck. She's that. She's still, still that good looking. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Anyways, so yeah, we had uh, we had Maris. Eve Torres, uh, Melina, Mickey James, the Bella Twins, even Jillian Hall, who can't sing or wrestle for her life. Um, uh, we had like Natalia, Beth Phoenix. We actually had some decent competition in the Divas Division, but the thing is, the WWE portrayed the women as some eye candy type shit, to where no one's gonna give a fuck about their matches, Eric Bischoff, I remember this, I remember what he said this, I believe it was on Raw 2002 to Raw 2003, he said it to Trish and Stacey Keebler on a Raw segment, I remember this, mainly because I watched it, month. I would say like months ago, when I had the network, before I got cut off, um, he said, no one cares about women's wrestling. And I I smiled at that because I'm like, that is so true. Okay, from the Attitude Era moving on, no one cared about women's wrestling. And no, 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 I am not including the Trish and, and Lita thing because that that's entirely different. You know, it's just that... They were able, they were finally able to develop a storyline where people actually care about the women. Well, mostly Trish and Leah. And people like to complain. Hold on. And it's a great point that people like to complain about Leah and Trish and how many times they fought. You see, it doesn't really matter to me about that because I didn't witness it and went through it at the time. Right? I'm witnessing Charlotte and Sasha now. I didn't witness uh, Lita and Trish back then. So if anyone comes at me with that, I'll be like, I never saw that. I never saw that live as it happened. Right? I was playing Dragon Ball Z, Def Jam Fight for New York, and Def Jam Vendetta and SSX back in 2005. I wasn't watching WWE back then. So, yeah. 
So it's a great point to bring that up, but at the same time, I mean, I guess we cared about them, but just that now, because a lot of people are very smart now, they think, they don't just sit there and blah, blah, blah. Plus, internet wasn't really popular back then. Internet was still shitty in 05. Don't, don't, don't tell me otherwise. Internet was still shitty until 2011, okay? So 2010, 2011, in my eyes, the internet was, was starting to be great. And now look at it. It's the, it's the main thing in the world right now. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, sure, they still had internet fans, but <laughs> like I said, the internet in the 90s, 2000s, holy shit, was just awful. So, now the internet fans are rising up, I guess. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, back then, 09 to 2000, I believe, 2013, you know, I... I didn't care, you know, I, I, I still care to, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I told you this, I'm not sure if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching still, later on in 2013, when I first saw Ifa Marie, I was like everyone else, oh my god, she's so hot, oh my god, the red hair looks so good on her. Oh my gosh, she looks so good in red. Now, first of all, she freaking murdered that by wearing green. Her first attire was green. And that's what she was. She was too green to be in the ring. Anyways, her first match, I believe, was in a tag team match. And she got a roll up on Tamina and she got the win. Now, I was with my friends the next day, and they were shitting on her, like, yo, she's terrible. I'm like, what do you say? She got a win on Raw. Give her a chance, you know? I was exactly like that. No, 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 no. And don't even try to call me a hypocrite, because, wait for it. I was like, give her a chance and stuff, right? But the more I watched Total Divas... Cause I didn't, I didn't, I don't notice a lot. I didn't notice a lot of things back then, but now I pay attention to every detail. But before, I didn't pay attention as much. So I would watch the match, and I'll act like nothing, nothing bad happened. I just watched the match, and yeah. And then I see clips on YouTube, and <sighs> the more I watched Total Divas at the time, then I realized she's fucking awful. <laughs> She is god awful. Good grief. Who whose ma whose girls is this? Whose women's is this? I don't know. Like seriously, I she was oh my god, like the bumps she would take. Oh my god. <laughs> you got to go watch the clips. The one botch I will never forget, I believe it was last year or two years ago, or when, whenever she started in NXT. She did a match against someone. She did a suplex. Like, no, she was, she was hit with a suplex from her opponent. The referee was counting. One, two. He stopped. She was supposed to kick out, but she didn't. She was a Eva Marie was a, a go find it on you. It's there on YouTube. I swear to God. She tried to kick out. No, she didn't kick out. Actually, she was supposed to kick out, but the referee was counting one, two, stop because she was supposed to kick out. And then the fans in full cell was like, "What the fuck are you doing? What is this? What? What are you doing? Come on, ref. What are you doing?" I was like, "I was like, what, ref?" That was a three. What are you doing? It was like the Kurt Angle and the Rock thing back in No Way Out 01. Where the referee, where Earl Hebner was like counting the Kurt Angle's shoulders are down. And after that, he didn't kick out. The referee was like, oh, he kicked out. Even though I did not see no shoulder move. So, yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, I gave her a chance, and then when I saw the clips, and I saw her bot stuff, I'm like, this girl's fucking awful. Never mind. 
Never mind. I didn't. I didn't tell my. Fr- I didn't tell my friends for, until for a while. Like, yeah, she's fucking god awful. Get off my TV. Um. So when she got suspended, I was happy as shit. But ever since then, we haven't seen her in months. We haven't seen her in months. Ain't that some shit? But um, yeah. Besides that. Uh, by 2014 to now, I cared about women's wrestling. Yeah, I still look at their titties and stuff. And, you know, I care about the, how they look a little bit. But I don't let that, you know, be the majority, like, the the major thing I think about the women. No. I let, I let wrestling be the major thing ever since I watched NXT. NXT is the, the savior of, of the WWE. It may not be right now, but it is. Because in reality, NXT, if it wasn't for Paige and Emma, if it wasn't for Charlotte and Natalia, I swear to God, I shit you not, the women's division would have not existed. The women's division that we know today would not exist. Because... If it wasn't for Triple H, if it wasn't for NXT, if it wasn't for all the stuff they'd done with Emma and Paige fighting f- to become the first ever NXT Women's Champion, to Natalya and and Charlotte Flair versus Hart in in a match where the winner would be the second ever NXT Women's Champion after Paige had to leave the belt back in NXT because she was the Divas Champion on the main roster. Charlotte won that match. And ever since then, Charlotte went to defend the title against Sasha Banks in their classic matches at TakeOver. And after that, lead on to a fatal four-way, which Sasha Banks won via roll-up. And after that, Sasha Banks defended the title against... Not only Charlotte, and then after that, she defended against Becky Lynch, which le- which led for Becky Lynch to have, uh, to become who she is with the theme music and the hair and the entrance and everything. How she is, go watch NXT Takeover Unstoppable. I sh- I shit you not, NXT Takeover Unstoppable was the first Becky Lynch that we know today entrance came through, and then after that. That was when Bailey came through. So you, so now you understand. NXT is the reason why that the women's division and the cruiserweights and everything else that has done in a positive way in the past year is because of NXT. Without NXT, there's no Zayn, there's no Owens, there's no Joe, no Nakamura, no Austin Aries, not even a Seth Rollins, a Dean Ambrose, a Roman Reigns, not even. Uh, an Emma, no Dana Brooke, no Charlotte, Sasha, Becky, Bailey, Nia Jax, none, nope, well, I kind of, I kind of want Byron Saxon to be gone, but no Graves, no Tom Phillips, no, no David Otunga, even though he was a part of the shitty NXT, but you get what I'm saying, so yeah, NXT made me realize, wrestling Matters, and I know that was TNA's tagline back in 2011 when they changed, right? When they changed from TNA Impact to Impact Wrestling in 2011, um, Wrestling Matters was their tagline, and then it became full effect with NXT. So, and that's how I am today. Without NXT. I wouldn't know who Sami Zayn was. I wouldn't love Sami Zayn as much as I do now. Uh, Kevin Owens, when he came through, I was like, all right, let's see what this guy got. I don't know much about him. And then he impressed me day one. Samoa Joe, I popped. I marked out. I have a freaking review on my second channel. All right, you guys can go check that out. It's called NXT Unstoppable or Reaction or Review. Or is it my... Uh, it's in my... Uh, my rev- my wrestling WWE reviews playlist. You can go look at it there. I marked that when Samojo when Samojo came in, and then obviously you saw my reaction. Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura when Shinsuke Nakamura made his debut in NXT Takeover Dallas, and Austin Aries made uh what well, he came through via live event or a taping of NXT. So, yeah. Hmm. NXT man 
And yeah, it may be dying now, maybe a little bit slow right now, but Triple H, I've heard and I've read and I've listened to a lot of people. Triple H is doing whatever it takes to redesign and re just just trying to rebuild NXT. Simple as that. Trying to get a new Zane, a new a new Kevin Owens, a new freaking Neville, a new all these guys, you know, like so trying to find someone who's the heart and soul of NXT. <sighs> so Monday Night Raw, like, yeah. I didn't find anything positive. But like I didn't find anything positive because I was thinking negative only and I was upset just because of that alone that Sasha won the title again. You know, for the third time. Third time in four months. In four since the brand split started, she's a three time champion. You do know if the brand split didn't happen, most likely we would have saw Becky Lynch be champion maybe or she would have went for the title at least. It would be different. But no, when they had the brand split, Sasha, Charlotte, and again, 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 and again. And then the people telling me on Twitter, oh, I, uh, the queen needs to be back on her throne and blah, blah, blah. Look, I just don't care who wins, who needs to win when it comes to Charlotte and Sasha. I just want someone to fight someone different. Is that so hard to ask? Fight someone different. And I'm not trying to be a smart mark. I just don't like super repetitive shit that I've lost interest. You see... When I complain about the scene in Orn, it's because I have so much interest and I still do to this day. Right? But the people that complain about that, they've lost interest or maybe they never had interest to begin with. I had interest ever since Sasha Banks came back on TV at the Royal Rumble. And then from there to when she won the title... After that, and after she lost the title at SummerSlam, I lost interest right there. And then I'm like, okay, Bailey's in the mix. Uh, Bailey cannot win. And I've been begging for this feud to end since fucking September. And it's still going on today. I feel like I can, I can get my PS4 before their, their feud finishes. Like, seriously. But yeah, I mean, it was positive. Uh, Paul Heyman and his promo with Michael Cole, which was hilarious and it was brilliant. Paul Heyman, like, he just sold it so well. Like, no shave, eyes all watery and bug-eyed, and like he didn't have any sleep at all. And he just sitting there like, we screwed up. We screwed up. We took him lightly, and we screwed up. This guy's a relic. Fantasy Warfare was built for a fucking video game. <laughs> Paul Heyman, man. For a fucking video game. Well, that's what happens. I mean, yeah. Paul Heyman, he just did it well. And he's like, well, if Goldberg's in the Rumble, Brock Lesnar is in the Royal Rumble. And I'm like, all right. We already, we already knew that was happening anyway, so why not? So, yeah, they're going to build off the Rumble off of Goldberg and, and uh, Lesnar. I don't mind that right now because they kind of need to do that. They're doing it in the Alamo Dome. If it was just the, the normal San Antonio arena that they have, uh, right? If it's just a normal arena, then sure. You know, then then they don't really need Goldberg and Lesnar, but they're doing it in the freaking Animal Dome. Now, granted that they don't have any stars built up, my eyes I, I I have a few, but to everyone else, to where they actually care and you know that they'll mark out for it, so to speak. Then no, they don't have any stars to where like a Rock and Austin, uh, Cena, Taker, uh, Brock Lesnar himself, freaking. You know, Triple H, 
uh, Michaels, you know, maybe even maybe even a Punk, you know, like uh, Bret Hart, you know, Ramon Diesel, you know, Bob Backlund, Hogan, Warrior, yeah, people like that. They don't have anyone like that. You don't have draws like that. That's the problem. They don't have draws like that. And I understand and I and I completely agree. It's like, come on. Like if I see if it's someone that I've been begging to come back for, then I'm not gonna mind it. I want to Gobert to come back for for years. Like since I found out about him and did research and looked at his past videos and you know, see what he's done, I'm like, why can't this like where is this guy? Where is he? Like, I hope he comes back one day, you know? Like, if everyone else is coming back, I hope he comes back, right? When they give us legends that I don't want to see, like, fucking Road Warrior Animal, or, or Doink the Clown, or, you know, a DDP, I, I still want to, I want to see him, but, uh, a Rikishi, yeah, I want to see him too. But y you know what I mean, right? Like, like, people that I don't want to see, I'm just going to bitch about it. Be like, I don't want to see this guy. Get him out of here. But if it's but if it's uh, someone I do want to see or someone I've been begging to come back, like Shane McMahon, for example. I wanted him to come back for so long, ever since he got his ankle crushed by Randy Orton. And when he left the WWE because of issues backstage, I've been begging for Shane to come back and beat up Randy Orton. And then he came back and confronted his dad and his sister. And it was just all great. It was all in a great moment. You know? Or when Daniel Bryan came back and had that, that heartfelt promo about him coming back to the Royal Rumble last year. Right? Or a year and a half ago. Like, you know? Like, shit like that. Like, stars. I mean, Jeff Hardy is still that guy. I still want Hardy to come back. I mean, nobody wants him back more than me. Yeah, I just don't show it anymore because I, because I got a little tired of it. But besides that, I do want Hardy to come back. It's bad. It's like ever since he lost to Punk in that steel cage match for the World Heavyweight Championship, I want him. I want him back immediately. Punk made fun of him wearing Jeff Hardy's makeup and his clothing and. You know, just making fun of him. Matt Hardy trying to fight for his brother. And after losing to CM Punk. And then the Undertaker stepped through. And and then lost the title to Punk. At, uh, so Sorry, Punk lost the title to Taker at Hell in the Cell a month later. So, so nobody wants it back more than me. I'm being dead serious. I mean, I, I kept asking myself, why did he leave? Why? And he's saying, oh, WWE, you know, the PG and... You know, all that stuff. So I'm like, oh, so because they're PG, that he won't come back. And then I found out later on, it's just, you know, he's willing to come back. He wants to end his career in WWE. It's just that he doesn't want to He doesn't want to go through the schedule like everyone else. He doesn't want a full-time schedule. He wants a schedule of his own to where he'll come back. Do I want him back? Hell yeah. I still do. Do I want him fight? Do his dream match? Main event WrestleMania? How in the Cell against the Undertaker. Hell fuck yeah I do. Is it going to happen? No. Undertaker by then will most likely be retired by the time Jeff Hardy comes back. And yeah, but there's a chance of him main event at WrestleMania though. You never know. I mean, maybe a triple threat match he could be involved in. I don't know. But trust me, Jeff Hardy come back to WWE. Well, I swear the ratings will raise up. I'm not going to say they're going to skyrocket to the top on Raw. But they're going to raise up more. Like, being the three millions every time Jeff Hardy comes on TV. So. <sighs> yeah. That's just my problem this entire time. Lucha Underground wasn't that interesting. It was Pentagon Jr. I mean, it was interesting... You know, to where, like, Pentagon Jr. was fighting everyone. Like, not everyone. He was fighting um, these the women that cost him the match at Aztec Warfare. Um, he was fighting them, like, one by one. He lost one, but he broke other... I, I believe he broke two members' arms off. And then the final member broke his arm off. So, yeah, both, both of his arms broken. 
from the same move that he does to people on. That's nasty. I mean, he suffered a Canadian destroyer. That move is nasty. I don't know. How the hell does he take that? I'm like, that's it. The one, That's the person that he lost to, the Canadian destroyer. Man, that was nasty. Um, I keep seeing these backstage segments. I just can't wait for next week episode. SmackDown, we have number one contenders for the tag titles in the... Uh, in um, Randy Run and Wyatt. That's actually going to be interesting. Actually, I'm going to give my uh, predictions in the final closing parts of this podcast as of right now. I'm just going to get this... Let's just get this out of the way. The podcast will be presenting you WWE TLC predictions right now. So, we have Baron, Baron Corbin versus Kalisto. We have Nikki Bella versus uh, Carmella. We have Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss. AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose. And the Wyatts against the uh, Slater and Rhino tag team for the tag team titles. How would I book it? Obviously, Baron Corbin versus Kalisto, number one. That's the first match of the night. Cherish match. First match of the night. Second match of the night would be for the SmackDown Live Women's Title uh, tables match. Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss. Third match would be the will be the, uh, it would be Nikki Bella versus Carmella. No DQ match. After that, it will be the TL. It will be the ladder match for the uh, IC title, Miz and Dolph Ziggler. And then after that, it will be the tag team title match. And then the main event, obviously, the WWE Championship in a TLC match. So who do I have? I have Baron Corbin. I have Carmella. I have Becky Lynch. I have Dolph Ziggler. I have Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt, and I have AJ Styles. Right? Why do I have those people? AJ Styles to keep the title because... Do, really? Do, Amber, I, I love Ambrose. Do you really, really want Ambrose to get back to the WWE Championship? I, 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 no. No. Love Ambrose. Title ring was... Yeah. At first it was hot, but now it's... Yeah, but then later on it was like... Ugh. So... Nope, AJ Styles got to stay champ. Maybe he might fight The Undertaker at Royal Rumble. We don't know. Uh, so that's that's one for that. Carmella needs a big win over Nikki Bella on pay-per-view. She keeps talking on that smack, that booger sugar, that good, good. But Nikki Bella is coming through and just do, 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 do her way. So I believe that Carmella should get the win just to shut up Nikki Bella and prove to herself like, yeah, bitch. I can talk all that good shit, but you, you ain't shit. I can whoop your ass. And I did it. Knocking your Bella Twins in the back of your, in the, in, in your back. Yeah. I, you know? So that's why. Mary Corbin to uh, get, to get revenge on Kalisto. After what Kalisto did. Kalisto cost him to be in Survivor Series. And, I don't know. <laughs> So it's just Baron Corbin. I just see Baron Corbin getting the win. Simple as that. Um, Orton and White. It, it, it's going to be interesting because Randy Orton is going after tag team titles. He's not going after the main title anymore for now. He's going after the tag team titles. Which is interesting because Randy Orton, the last time he went for tag team gold, it was with Edge 10 years ago. Around this time, 10 years ago, Randy Orton won the World Tag Team Titles with Edge by beating Ric Flair and Roddy Piper on Monday Night Raw. And it's funny how I remember all that. (laughs) But it's true. Randy Orton and Edge defeated Piper and Flair to become the World Tag Team Champions 10 years ago. Alright, so with that being said, 10 years later, Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt... Went into tag team gold, man. Like you know, it, it it's just it's it, it's just interesting. And finally, Randy Orton is doing something to elevate another superstar. Wink, wink, John Cena. Wink, wink. Brock Lesnar. Wink, wink. Vince McMahon. So Randy Orton not only getting something for himself, but he's elevating. Bray Wyatt, just like Rhino, you know, 
he elevated Heath Slater. Heath Slater was hot, but Rhino was that that extra. Rhino was like Rhino was like the sauce on a like like you have pizza for example. And I'm getting hungry already. <laughs> but right, like for example, he said it was the pizza. It was hot, right? People were into it. People were were getting ready to accept it, right? And then Rhino to make it better was like the side dish or like you know it was like the cheese bread or the sauce with it or the drink. You know, Rhino was the side where where it will make it more. It will make it way more better than it already is. So. That's what Randy Orton's going to do with Bray Wyatt. That's why I choose them to win the tag team gold. Dolph Ziggler, I just want him to win back the title. I mean, I we went through it with Miz a hundred and I don't know how many days. A lot of days. I mean, do I, I mean, I have heard of, I, I of, a, uh, of an idea. Like, like, imagine Ty Dillinger came up to the main roster. Ty Dillinger versus The Miz. The 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 money maker versus the 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 perfect ten, bruh. I mean the story in that that'll be interesting, you know. But uh, I just want Dolph to win. Just I mean he won it one night, then the next time he defended it, he lost. You know he got screwed. So I kind of want him to get redemption. That's just me. You know I have no logic behind it. It's just it's just me being me, being like I just want him to win. That's just my pick. Right? I don't have any logic behind it. I don't really need any logic because I'm not really looking to the future right now when it comes to Dolph Ziggler and the IC title because every time Dolph Ziggler wins the IC title, nothing much happens. So, I mean, the Miz that wins the title, who's he going up against? I don't know who, but we'll see. So, I'm just going to go with Dolph for this one. And Becky Lynch, because I want to go with Bliss so bad, but the last time I went for Bliss, it didn't happen. So... I'm going to go stick with Becky Lynch this time. And we'll see. I mean, Becky Lynch. I mean, people say it would be better for her to chase it. I agree. But we'll see. And that's it. And if there's any pre-show matches, I don't give a fuck. We're just gonna, I'm just going to sit there and watch. So, yeah. I did not watch TNA, but thankfully Matt Hardy got back his broken brilliance until last week, so I gotta see what happened. And uh, all right, I have two videos coming out uh, tomorrow and Sunday. I have a WWE 2K14 War Rumble video where I just play matches. This is what happens when you don't have 2K17, and. And I did a GTA gameplay, so some creepy shit. I will be tweeting up the thumbnails and 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 you know, putting up what like what's behind the thumbnails and shit. So I will be tweeting that out. If you have not, follow me on Twitter at Point One Two Three Gym. Leave a like on this video and subscribe for more because YouTube, I guess, is broken because you know if you're not active, then you're out. So I don't know. I just don't know. But um. I think that's it. Is there much to talk about? I mean, Roblox is like weeks. I mean, I can predict Roblox. I mean, Roblox will have Owens versus Reigns. I see Reigns winning the title. Like I, I said it weeks ago. I see Reigns winning the championship between now until next year. And I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to be upset. I just know it's going to happen. You know, just like Cena becoming the 16-time champ. I know what's going to happen. I'm I'm not going to be a smart mark or an old relic that that thinks that his opinion matter but in reality doesn't. No one's going to listen to this guy, right? Like, you know, like an old guy going to come out here and say, Rick Flair's record, 16 times. He never won the WWE title 60 times. He just, he just won different titles, and he just like, you know what, let's just put it all together. Yeah, 16. He won the WWE title once, and he won some WCW titles back then. So that, that, that so yeah, relax yourself, Ca calm your tits, okay? And and Ric Flair said it himself. You know, if it's anyone else that that'll break my record and I'm happy with, I'm glad it's John Cena. So if John Cena got an endorsement from Ric Flair, if you get an endorsement from Ric Flair to break his streak, to break his title reign, his title record, bruh. I'll do whatever it takes to do that shit, you know? 
But uh, Reigns versus Owens at Roadblock. I still stick with the New Day versus the Gallows and Anderson and Cesaro and Sheamus triple threat. I still see that happening. But they got to defend the tag team titles until Roadblock to reach that record date. Sasha Banks versus Charlotte. I see that happening again where Charlotte will get back the title. And I'm just going to be like, what the fuck? Four times? Four times since WrestleMania. Four times. Jesus Christ. And um, I think that's it. The U.S. title. I don't have it. I realize Reigns is the U.S. champion for God's sakes. And, and who is he fighting for that title? I don't know. Nobody. <sighs> the New Day. Fucking make me cringe on Raw. Fucking Kofi Kingston. I love the guy. I'm a fan of him. Baby. Wh- whoever says that. I don't care who. They. I cringe. It's like, oh, why? Why? But, um, like, I want a New Day to lose the tag titles at any means necessary. I don't care who. I don't care who they lost it to. The Shining Stars, Cody Truth. I don't give a fuck who they lose it to. Lose the damn tag titles. Alright, that's all I'm saying. And I don't think they're going to lose it anytime soon. And I might have to just live with it. At least they entertain me still. They're so funny. You know, like like the New Day. I'm not, I'm not, this ain't no bandwagon shit, you know. I love the New Day. Genuinely. All right, I I gave them a chance, and then I realized how sucked, how bad they were, and then they were they genuinely able to turn me around and be like, you know what? This team got something. They got something, and it was comedy, and they had and they had my interest, and they made me laugh. When then, but then when they feud the League of Nations, that's when it all went downhill for me because they turned face, and then they're sucking up to the crowd, but they're still hilarious in a in a way. But at the same time, it was just not that good. But what do you think of my opinions for TLC and my opinion on how I viewed the women years ago and just overall? What do you guys think of this podcast? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Leave a like on this video. Leave a comment. If you have anything to say, leave a comment below. Don't be afraid to. And subscribe now for more. And follow me on Twitter. At boy 123 gym. gym Sorry. And yeah, that's it. The last podcast. I'll leave it in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next time. And I am out. Uh, later. Later. <laughs>